Hi guys, it's Lynn here. I hope everyone is having a fantastic day. Now in this video, I'm going to be showing you all the different types of Tradescantia houseplants that we have in our collection. And also afterwards, giving you a bit of care tips on how to care for and grow for them. So something different than my usual cacti succulent videos, but wanted to share this as a little bit something different. So first of all, these are our Tradescantia plants, mostly on the top shelf, mixed with a selection of other types of house plants that we have. We've got some ferns and shuffleras and uh, other types all along here. But I'm going to focus on just the Tradescantias, which are mostly on the top shelf here. And there's uh, some more on the bottom shelf as well. And these are in our kitchen um, on a back shelf. We have grow lights as well that we usually have on on the dark, dull days, but it's quite bright today, so we don't need them on. And they get a lot of uh, sort of light coming in from the window um, opposite them. So first of all, um, here are our collection. I'm going to start off with this one here, which is, uh, this is a Tradescantia Silamontana. And it's one of the lovely ones that has the lovely sort of white hairs on the, the lovely leaves. Absolutely gorgeous. Almost has like a fuzzy, fuzzy leaf appearance, like fuzzy, fuzzy felt that you used to get years ago as a kid. And this is a lovely long trailing plant that we've had probably for about three years now. We got it, it was about that size, about two inches, and it has grown into a lovely trailing plant. It would look lovely in a hanging basket as well. Very lovely. And then the second one we've got here. Now this is Tradescantia fluminensis, a miniature variety, which is this one here. It is one of the miniature leaves. Now this is the more commonly seen Tradescantia fluminensis, which is the dark green, um, larger leaf variety. But this one is a miniature form of that. I don't know the exact ID of it, but as you can see, compared to my thumb, it is a much more tinier, little compact little plant. So I'm going to be potting that one on again, probably in the spring. And then this one here, I'll just take it down so you can see all the leaves. This is Tradescantia zebrina, or Tradescantia zebra, commonly called um, zebra or zebrina. And it's a lovely trailing, also a lovely trailing Tradescantia as well. Beautiful, beautiful sort of maroony plum coloured, lovely coloration with lovely silver on the um, sides of it. Beautiful, very common sort of popular house plant as well, very lovely. And as you can see there, this one, a lot of the leaves sort of fell off during the winter, so maybe obviously pruning this back and repropagating again from the bottom parts, which is very easy to do when I, when I talk about the propagation. And there's more the, the Tradescantia zebrina there. And then this one here is Tradescantia um, fluminensis. And this is the larger leaf version of the miniature one that I just showed you there. And again, we have a couple of these, got another one on the other side, I'm gonna show you there. Also, this is trailing down. What's lovely about Tradescantias is that they have a lovely trailing habit. And they're often nicknamed the Wandering Jew. And they're also sort of commonly called the spiderwort plants. Wandering Jew because of the way it sort of trails all the way down and it will often sort of grow and take root amongst other type of plants you've got nearby. So um, that's its lovely sort of common nickname there, beautiful. And then this one here is probably one of my favorite favorites. This is um, Tradescantia spathacea, and it's the variegated form, the variegata. And look at that beautiful coloration, guys. That's a lovely pink and green stripy version. And the underside of the leaves, as you can see, is a lovely pink color, absolutely gorgeous. And that's the plant we got on the top, top of the shelf there. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful coloration. And that's the uh, Tradescantia um, Spathacea Variegata. Uh, that is an absolute beauty. And then it's gonna take you around to the other side here. Um, and here we go. We have got then here, we have, this is a lovely pink um, sort of plummy leaved variety, another lovely long hanging one. And this is Tradescantia pallida. And it's got a lovely sort of plum sort of coloration to the leaves, a lovely deep plum, and also like a lovely matte appearance as well. Just show that where it's all trailing down, growing all the way down here. It even comes all the way down onto this pot all around our ZZ plant here. Absolute beautiful. 
and I'll just show you there. Again, this would make an amazing hanging basket. We have this trailing all the way down off the top shelf, like a waterfall of Tradescantias. Absolutely lovely. So that's Tradescantia pallida. And then we have um, yet another Tradescantia fluminensis here, also coming down. A beautiful, beautiful plant there. So that's all the ones on the top shelf. And then on the bottom shelf here, we have Tradescantia spathacea, another spathacea. This one, as I say, is the variegated one. And this one is the all green variety with the lovely deep maroon coloration on the bottom. And this particular plant, this is a large plant, as you can see in my hand. This is one that my wonderful fiance Hans bought over when he moved, when he lived in Sweden. He'd had it for a number of years and brought it over with his other plant collection when he moved over here to live in Ireland. And he's pruned it back many times and it, it just keeps growing back. It's incredible. And then this one here is also another um, trad uh, Tradescantia um, Spathacea also and this believe it or not this particular plant you can see the height of it um, was actually grown from seed from the mother plant here and we got that from the seeds from these little seeds that come from the, the flowers and I've made a whole video on how to harvest the seeds and grow Tradescantia from seed which I'll include the links in this video so I'm going to mention that when I talk about the care tips so uh, that's our, our Tradescantia collection there. Absolutely wonderful. Now I'm going to talk to you a little bit about their care and how you can care and grow for them. So then, when it comes to the lighting, now the light requirements, sorry, the light requirements for Tradescantias, they like ideally bright indirect light. Now they can take a bit of sun, but ideally some indirect, very bright light. Um, a little bit of morning sun or late afternoon sun won't hurt these plants at all, but in fact it helps to encourage them to flower. But ideally if you have an indirect um, sunny position is best for these plants. They can take more shade, they can be grown in north facing windows if it's a bright north facing window, but they're more likely to flower if they can have some sun or an indirect sunny position. As I say here, these are on our, the plant shelves in our kitchen and they get a bit of natural indirect sun coming in from the, the window opposite. Um, and then we put the grow lights on on dark days. If you only have a, a window that's not ideally the best brightness, then you can also attach um, a grow light over the top of them to give them a bit of an added boost. Now, when it comes to watering, now with watering uh, Tradescantias, they are tropical plants. They like to be kept moist. Um, they can, I certainly water mine every time the soil starts to dry out in the pot. I don't let them go dry for too long. They, if you let these plants dry, go too dry for too long, they tend to drop stems and the stems sort of drop off. So ideally from spring and summer, water every time the, the top of the soil starts to dry out. They don't like to be kept waterlogged, so just enough to keep the soil moist. And then less in winter, I go a little bit longer in between watering them in winter and let the soil dry out a little bit more and then give them a good watering again. So pretty easy with the, with the watering and rainwater is always best if you can get it. Now with the, the soil, now these houseplants, these Tradescantias, they like ideally a peat based houseplant soil. They don't like to have a, a very gritty soil or any of them types of soils, they like to be kept moist but also it needs to be a well-draining soil. So I use a mixture of peat, a peat houseplant soil with added perlite. And I, I make a, a mixture up with about two parts houseplant soil with about one part of perlite for extra drainage. And they do very well in that and sort of repot them every time they need to really, usually every couple of years when the roots start to come out the bottom of the pot. And temperatures, now average indoor temperature, if you've got these indoors, Average indoor temperature is best, which will be about, about, about 15, anything, sort of 15 to sort of 27 degrees Celsius, which is about 60 to 75 degrees Fahrenheit. And no, no less than 10 Celsius, 50 degree Fahrenheit, because they are tropical plants, so they obviously can't take any frost or cold temperatures. Um, other than that, average indoor temperatures seem to suit these plants very well. And when it comes to humidity, 
Um, average room temp, so average room humidity of anything between sort of 50 to 70 percent humidity suits these plants best. They can take a little bit higher than that and a little bit lower. These plants are very adaptable, but you'll know if they're getting too. They need more humidity if the if the leaves start to go a little bit brown at the tips. Um, and they start going very crunchy even though the plant is being watered then that usually need to increase the humidity if that's the case just give them a bit of a spritz in every every day with a bit of a light spray of rainwater other than that they should be fine with anything between 50 to 70 percent humidity now when it comes to fertilizing um, I don't give any feed, uh, feed at all to these tradescantias um, from October to sort of late March but from um, sort of late March onwards until till early October I'll feed these every two to three weeks with a good quality houseplant fertilizer and that keeps them all sort of growing well over the uh, the summer months. Now propagation these plants are incredibly easy to propagate from cuttings I'm just going to show you here these are, this is some of my Tradescantia zebrina there. Literally just cut them off, prune them back when you have to prune, sink them in water, you can see all the roots growing there. That's in about two weeks already. And this is sort of late winter time. Ideally spring is the best time to take cuttings, but I find that Tradescantia roots so well um, any time of year. I mean, look at that, the roots. I'll be potting that up soon. Another little plant and all you have to do when it comes to taking cuttings obviously is just and I, I have made a whole video on how to take cuttings of Tradescantia and also how to grow Tradescantia from seed so I'm going to mention that in a minute but always when you when you're taking cuttings just cut below a node and remove um, the bottom leaf or the, the second leaf so you've got a couple of nodes free for the roots to come from and take at least at least two to three inches of a cutting and literally just stick it in water um, it will root very well that way and uh, when it comes to sort of the, the pruning as well when these plants do grow very um, fast as you can see here this is very sort of lanky a lot of the leaves have fell off I sort of go in here it's my own fault to go in here to to attend to the orchids and I knock a lot of the leaves off as you can see so I'm going to be obviously cutting this back and then repropagating all the little the little cuttings as well uh, it's easy to prune back um, usually from the springtime you can do that and um, when it comes as well to seed sowing um, these plants you can grow from seed when they're flower I've made a video when I actually harvested we had this lovely Tradescantius bathycea here the big mother plant she was flowering beautiful about three years ago it flowers every year but three years ago with the flowers when the flowers sort of die off they have the little seeds this is packed with seeds there look at that they form these little seeds and they're very easy to harvest and sow the, sow the seed they, there's a really high germination rate with these Tradescantia plants and see this is one we've grown from seed there has its own little seed pods also so, you, so I've made a video on how to harvest the seeds and also how to grow Tradescantia from seed. So I'll link that video up above and also down below in the video description. So then seed sowing and cutting is very easy way of propagation. And as I say, when it comes to pruning, just cut back any unruly stems. If you want to keep the plant more compact, um, you can also pinch back the growing tips as well. This will help it bush out. You literally pinch it back and um, that helps it to keep it more compact and bush, bushy and uh, flowering yep these plants flower from spring and summer and I'll just show you as I mentioned I show you the little seed pods there this is what the flowers don't think I've got any in flower at the moment obviously because it's late winter to, to, to show you but they these are the old flowers that have dried up now and they've got the seeds inside lovely little white flowers with um, Tradescantias very very pretty when they're in flower and I may have made I think I've made a video when this was in flower I'm not quite sure now but if I have I'll link the video also down below in the video description so it gives you a bit of an idea of what they look like um, but that's all the old sort of dead flowers are there with the seeds in and um, yep the last one I think they just need to cover is pests and uh, diseases um, usually the most common diseases will be down to root rot um, obviously down to over watering and as I mentioned when I talked about the watering these plants best to wait till they start to dry out slightly um, at the top of the soil before watering again don't keep them constantly 
you know, there's a difference between moist and wet. They don't like to dry out for long, but they don't like to be kept soaking wet either. So just enough water to keep the soil moist. And as soon as it starts to dry up, then water again. So root rot is the most common one if that is happens with the, with the diseases. And um, pests, like all house plants and plants in general, mealybugs, thrips, spider mites, seem to be the biggest one. But I like to use horticultural neem oil with the house plants and also my other plants and cacti succulents as well. And that really does help to not only get rid of pests, but also prevent any as well. So I've made a whole video on how to use horticultural neem oil as a pest and disease prevention treatment. I'll link that video also up above and down below in the video description. So that's it guys. I hope you like the little tour of our trad at Scanty. It's a little bit of a care guide there for you. And uh, thank you all so much for watching. And for lots more tips and tricks on how to care for plants and house plants and cacti and succulents, then please do subscribe to my channel. And also don't forget to check out my website, desertplantsofavalon.com. I want to send you loads of love, heaps of happiness, and tons and tons of plant power from across the Emerald Isle. And until my next video, bye.